Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. Why on earth am I divulging my personal life to the world in this kind of way? Am I crazy? Well, sure, maybe a little bit, but that's not the why. So I encourage you to stick around to the end of my nine part series when you will find out the why to all of this. There is a method to my madness, I promise. Now, most of the stuff I'm going to be sharing with you is really hard for me to say out loud. And up until recently, I never thought I would be on film spilling my secrets to the world. But that's also why I feel incredibly proud of myself, because even a year ago, I wouldn't have had the courage to do this. Up until recently, I thought keeping my demons hidden behind closed doors was the right thing to do. I was worried others would judge me harshly or think poorly of me. You know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree kind of thing. Back then, I acted like I believed in myself when in fact I didn't. I was, however, fortunate enough to always have people in my life who loved and believed in me, people who continued to support me even in my darkest moments. Now I see how paramount that is to have people in your corner who believe in you even when you don't. So I want to give a special shout out to all those people who never gave up on me. Seriously, you know who you are. I may not be here if it wasn't for you, so thank you. As a kid growing up, I thought I had a fairly normal life. Aside from living in the ghetto, without a father, fights between relatives, which is normal, and murderous rants from my cousin, it was good. My life was good. So I thought. We didn't have a lot of money growing up. My mom was a single parent, so I'm sure some of you watching can relate. Being a single parent is mad hard and I have a crazy amount of respect to anyone out there doing it. And shout out to my mom too, because despite any situation she was in, she never gave up. And she always made sure that I didn't go without. In grade school, I was a well-behaved, quiet, active, gullible kid. So gullible. I vividly remember these moments. I didn't know it then, but they helped shape the distrust I had for people. Throw on a few more years of baggage and eventually I stopped trusting everyone. I was always one foot in, one foot out in all of my relationships. Always ready to run because I thought I had to. But now I realize that back then I hated when people left me, so I wanted to leave first because I thought it hurt less, but that's not true. Love is love. It doesn't matter who leaves first. It all hurts the same when it ends. I was eight years old the first time I feared for my life. I was at my grandma's house with a cousin of mine who is the same age as me. This specific cousin had some anger issues. Really, we all did, but he was much worse. That day specifically, him and I were playing together in the kitchen when suddenly we started arguing about who knows what. He got angry and I was in trouble. He proceeded to grab a knife from the kitchen drawer and chased me around our grandma's house, threatening to stab me if he caught me. I was screaming at the top of my lungs, running away from him as fast as I could. Luckily, I've always been fast. Faster than him, at least. Eventually, our grandma came running out of the bathroom in her towel saw him with a knife, picked his ass up, took the knife out of his hand, put the knife down, and then proceeded to beat the shit out of him. At the time, I didn't think much about it, but if he caught me, I may not be here today. I really wish I could tell you that this type of behavior was abnormal for him, but 
then I'd be lying. Over the next few years, things progressively got worse. One day, while at my aunt's house, I was upstairs playing with him and Kelly, who is another cousin of mine, a few years younger than him and I. We were playing in her room when suddenly they started arguing. Then next thing I knew, he had jumped on top of her, forcing her on her back. His legs were straddling her chest and he had both of his hands wrapped around her neck, strangling her. I jumped on top of him and started punching him as hard as I could so he would stop, so he would stop hurting her. I was screaming at the top of my lungs, trying my hardest to help, but I wasn't. He was much bigger than me, much stronger than Kelly and I. Luckily, before it was too late, my mom and aunt, their mom, came running into her room, tore me off of him and him off of her. She survived that day. Afterwards, my mom and I immediately left and we stayed away for a while for obvious reasons. As more time passed, things pretty much stayed the same. Believe it or not, but this type of behavior became the new norm for me. Unintentionally, of course. I think as a kid growing up in that type of environment, my mind subconsciously desensitized me to the trauma. That way I can function as best as possible given the circumstances. One morning when Kelly and I were in high school, she stopped by my locker before class to tell me that the night before she woke up to him in her room. He was leaning over her bed and had a knife gripped in his hand, watching her sleep for who knows how long. Luckily, she woke, she screamed, he left. She survived that time too. Thinking back on this moment, I knew it wasn't safe for her to live in her home anymore. I was worried, worried that one day she wouldn't be so lucky, that one day, maybe eventually, he would kill her. The bell rang for class. We went our separate ways and I carried on with my day, just like any other day.